needs King Kong. Here's the review. What's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today I'm finally talking about a long-awaited sequel in this monsterverse of films. It's Godzilla vs. Kong. The King of the Apes, King Kong, is being monitored on Skull Island, but it's being increasingly clear that he needs a new habitat, especially because Godzilla is out and about destroying things left and right, and nobody knows why he's not being a protector anymore. And sooner rather than later, Godzilla will come for Kong, since that's what he does. The human's plan is to get Kong safe in the world for the monsters known as Hollow Earth. But before they get there, Godzilla comes a-knockin'. But thankfully, Kong's ready to come a-knockin' back. I feel like ever since the conception of this monsterverse, people have been coming back time after time because they knew Godzilla vs. Kong was eventually gonna happen. And they were like, yeah, sure, you know, I'll watch these Godzilla and Kong movies, I'll have a blast, but the film that they've been wanting to see this entire time, the most, for years, has been this one. So a lot of folks have been really anticipating this modern day take on the two beasts, battling it out, and while I can say that I was really excited to watch it, I wasn't as excited as everybody else, since I've mostly been really enjoying all these movies for different reasons. Even Godzilla, King of the Monsters, I thought that was gorgeous on all fronts, and I had a blast watching it. One thing before I really start breaking it all down, which I thought was really interesting, was Kyle Chandler in this film, because in case you can't recall, he was also in 2005's King Kong with uh, Peter Jackson. So this is his second King Kong movie. So what did I think about this highly anticipated film? Well, in general, I had a very good time with it, but obviously it's not a perfect film by any means. It's, you know, it's just entertaining. I mean, people have been making these theories for months, maybe even years now, as to how this entire film would pan out from beginning to end. And I mean, I gotta say, they've all basically been spot on. Uh, which means that this film is highly predictable. Sure, a lot of these Godzilla and King Kong films are usually predictable, but out of all of them, just because people had figured out this plot way before it came out, it kind of kills the experience of not knowing what's to come. But thankfully, that's not that important. People are, are going into this film expecting one thing, and one thing only, a good old duking it out session between these two super beasts, and that's what you get. I will say that the plot with the humans is probably one of the more compelling narratives out of all the films, as it's the one that's exploring more of this hollow earth theory that they've been talking about for a while. So that's kind of cool, and I don't want to talk too much about that in particular, since that's one area in the film that feels relatively fresh, and there's not much of that. But I did want to mention it because humans are often the question with these films, right? Because there's not much that they can usually physically do to progress the story forward because they're just so small in comparison to Godzilla or Kong. Usually, all they can really do is offer a ton of exposition and just watch the monsters destroy everything in their path, but they actually do quite a bit in this film to keep things moving forward, and I really appreciated that. That helped me feel as if other people are right in assuming that this movie is the best of the MonsterVerse. But it's not a very deep or meaningful story, okay? It's just dumb entertainment for dumb entertainment's sake. Something that you can shut your brain off to, maybe drool a little bit, and watch a battle of monsters duke it out. In 20 years time, people will remember this film for the gimmick of Godzilla fighting King Kong. They won't remember much about anything else. The humans, the actual plot regarding Hollow Earth, none of it. Because none of it really has that much depth or development. It's just stuff they filled in the rest of the movie with. So let's go ahead and break down my final score from a tactical vantage point. Like the rest of the series, the movie has a lot of fantastic visual effects. The cinematography is wonderful and made for a very, very big screen. The music choices are sometimes fun and full of personality, but for me, the storytelling just wasn't really there. The writing was essentially as hollow as the Earth in this film, which didn't really allow for much character development of the human side or a solid story that you'll remember in the long run. So this tactical score is 74%. My bias score, or how I felt about the film overall, was not bad at all. Like I said, it's a very entertaining movie above all else. That's what it was going for, that's what it achieved. 
And it's a film that I don't think people would mind rewatching because it's fun. The score is 92%. And when we average out the two scores together, we'll come to the final rating of 83%, 83 out of 100 possible stars or a B letter grade. It's definitely fun, right? But like I said, I consider it imperfect in the long run, but perfection was never what they were seeking. What about you guys though? Have you seen Godzilla vs. Kong? And if you have, what are your thoughts on it? And where do you place it if you rank it with the other films. And as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, boost out. Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number one. Critic that I go to when I need a movie pick. Thanks for joining up with us.